Yo guys, what is going on? I hope you're doing well and welcome to this new video of mine. Now recently guys, I've been making some kind of educational videos, I guess, talking about my medicine work experience journey, how you guys also as med applicants can get the work experience that I got, such as um, shadowing pharmacists, uh, shadowing doctors, surgeons, and all of these different stuff. So today I thought, why not make a video about the UCA and the BIMA? Now basically guys, the UCA and the BIMA are two medical school examinations that you have to take if you wanna get into med school here in the UK guys. Alright, so in this first section I'll be talking about the UCA, covering some things about it, some quick tips about it. So guys, the UCA is basically a two hour computer based test. So I don't really know how to explain it, but it's kind of like an IQ test, I guess, really. So the UCA is two hours long and it has five different sections. Now guys, the five sections of the UCA are the first one being verbal reasoning, the second one being decision making, the third one being quantitative reasoning, the fourth one being abstract reasoning, and the last one is the situational judgment test. Now guys, talking about the first section, which is verbal reasoning. Now, I think this is actually the hardest bit of the entire exam. Now, you might say this is subjective, but actually, if you check the statistics, the official statistics in the UK uh, website, you'll see that basically most of the med school applicants, dentistry applicants, they end up getting the lowest marks on this section. Now, this section has basically 11 passages each passage that you read has basically four questions on it. Um, you only get two different type of questions. Really, they will ask you a question, for example, um, based on the passage, they will say, is this question, is this statement true, false, or can't tell? Now guys, for verbal reasoning, if you actually wanna be good at it, you just need to practice a lot. You need to read lots of passages, maybe read books and stuff like that. If you're a guy who's into English and does lots of reading, then honestly, I don't think verbal reasoning should be that much of a hard thing for you. But a lot of the times you see med school applicants end up getting the questions wrong, first of all, because it could be tricky. And also because it's so time pressured, you're trying to read fast and you end up, your brain doesn't process everything single information. Now guys, the second section is the decision making section. Now in this section, what you have is that you have 29 different questions. You've got 31 minutes. Again, it's quite time pressured. And basically you get questions like evaluate the conclusion or evaluate, evaluate different arguments. And you talk about whether you think this argument is right or wrong, or whether it's you agree with it, how much, to what extent do you agree with it? So that's really about it. You'll get questions from texts, charts, Venn diagrams, and all of these different things. Now guys, the third section, as I said, is the quantitative reasoning section. Now this has 36 different questions and you have 24 minutes. Now this is the section that literally most of the people end up doing quite good. So this section and the next section being the abstract reasoning section. People really do good for it because this section is kind of like GCC level maths really. But the, the problem is that people end up not having enough time to properly think about these questions and answer all of them correctly. Now guys, the kind of topics that come up in here is ratios, percentages, just kind of like basic GCC kind of questions really. But you do have, as I said, a time pressure, which is the problem. And also you've been given five different options and many of the options might be very similar in every single question. So you might get confused and because of the time pressure, you might click on the wrong answer and just normal silly mistakes that happen in the exams anyway. Now guys, the fourth section is the abstract reasoning section. Now this section basically has 55 different questions and you only have 13 minutes to answer all of them. So it is quite time pressured, but actually this is one of the, uh, one of those sections that people really do good at, I guess. And uh, it basically has puzzles and it has like shapes. So if you're into geometry and you really like puzzles and you can like break down puzzles and stuff like that, then this is the section for you. Now guys, the last section is the situational judgment test. So basically you have 69 questions and only 26 minutes. Now this section is actually quite interesting. This section has different medical school scenarios that happen and you have to say whether it's appropriate or whether you agree with it or what you actually think about it. Now guys, this is the section where basically students need to have a basic understanding of ethical principles. So you need to know the ethical principles for you to actually do quite well in this section. Now guys, this is the five different sections of the UCA. Now guys, what's important about the UCA is that you actually understand how to answer each type of the questions. And also what you need to do is practice, practice, practice. Do like different questions, do like um, different mock papers, go onto different websites such as Medify. Also go and check out this, uh, like I said in my previous videos, my friend, one of my mates, he's basically got this entire UCAT uh, crash course with over 50 different videos. And he basically has an entire company called MedShop. So check them out. If you actually watch all of these videos and understand them, then I promise you guys, you're gonna smash your UCAT, literally. 
Now, when it comes to UK universities, some of the universities that might take it here in London at St. George's and King's and Queen Mary, and obviously outside of London, literally most of the universities do take UK. So that's the main exam, and you want to focus on it, and you want to make sure that during this summer holiday, where you're basically revising for your UK, you spend a good amount of your day revising for the UK and doing all of these different practice questions. Now, guys, the BMAT is basically a two hour pen based test. Now, it's different from the UK because you're actually doing it with your pen and it has three different sections, whereas the UK has five different sections. Now, the BMAT is basically for universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial UCL. Leeds and a few other universities but the majority of the universities for med school or for dentistry is literally the UK so this is why a lot of the people actually put more emphasis on the UK now guys the BMAT unlike the UK you can only possibly take it on two different occasions so basically in my time it was at the end of August or you can take it uh, at the start of September depending on every single year or you can take the late BMAT which is basically around October time now guys, the advantage of taking the early BMAT is that um, whenever you take the BMAT result, it actually takes three weeks for the results to be processed and to come to you. So what you can do is that if you take the early BMAT, you will have your results by, I guess, uh, late September. And what you can do is that because your UCAS deadline application is 15th of October, you will have two weeks for you to think which uni you're actually applying to. Whereas if you're taking the uh, late BMAT, you'll actually get your results somewhere like in November. And by that time, it's too late if you've applied to BMAT universities already. So now, guys, talking about the BMAT, like I said, it has three different sections. The first section is literally so, so, so similar to the UCA. So if you smash your UCA, then guess what, guys? the chances of you smashing your BMAT section one will be very high. Now this section is basically 60 minutes, you have one hour to do it, it's handwritten and you have 35 different questions to answer. Now guys, section two is the section that people end up finding the most hard, I guess. Now section two, basically you have one hour again to do it and as I said, it's a pen uh, and paper test. So what you have is one hour and what you're gonna be doing in this one hour is that you're gonna be answering 27 different questions. Now these 27 different questions will be from topics such as maths, chemistry, biology, physics. Now guys, you guys know that from my previous videos I mentioned, I did AS levels in maths, chemistry, biology, physics. So for me and anyone who literally does maths and the free sciences, it will be very, very easy or it should be much easier. Now section three guys is the most interesting section. This is the section that I absolutely nailed. I smashed it, alhamdulillah. So guys, this section is basically you have 30 minutes and they will be giving you three different questions and and it's kind of like an essay based question so it will have three different topics and you can choose any of these different essays and write a topic about it or write like a little essay about it now guys remember that for the UK you actually have like an on-screen calculator on the UK exam for you to use on the computer whereas the BMAT you can't use a calculator which is why a lot of the people find the BMAT much harder so guys make sure for the BMAT you actually make sure that your mental maths is on point before going into the exam so honestly guys the advice I would give you when it comes to uh, the BMAT and the UK is practice 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 also watch many different videos many different tutorials whatever you can find out there online for you to actually master every single section and understand every single type of question so yeah guys that was the end of the video i hope you enjoyed let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below guys this wasn't like an in-depth uh, kind of video i was just telling you some quick things about the uk quick things about the bima when to take it why to take it for which universities you can take it and by the way guys all of the links will be down there in the description below for you to check out guys so yeah guys i'll see you in my next video like comment subscribe and peace out guys and i'll see you in my next video